What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Coffee Break. I'm excited because we're here in uh, episode two. We got a cool dude we're gonna interview here who is like, I, I met him over a cup of coffee and it's been such a, um, some amazing people I've been meeting over a cup of coffee over at Cafe Real if you don't know, go check them out. But um, we're just, I want you to stay tuned to it because we're gonna have a dope chat sneakers motorcycles and and a whole bunch of other cool stuff so stay tuned coffee break we're back we're here and we got harley 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 like the harley davidson right it's like literal right yeah, harley davidson yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'll, we'll we'll touch a little bit on okay. that as, as yeah, we get in there because i thought that was cool yeah. yeah um but thank you for Oh, joining me my here, pleasure, bro. My pleasure. My um, pleasure. I'm I'm super excited that that you've been able to come down from Bristol, Connecticut. Shout out to anyone who, in Bristol, Connecticut. <laughs> Bristol. Um, it's it's been um it's been cool, you know, just engaging with you and talking to yeah, you yeah. these past few times that we've met over, yeah, like sure. in the coffee shop, you know. For sure. Um, but how you been, man? Good. How's things. Good. Good. Crazy, but good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you know, life happens, and then we just. Uh, I guess uh, just ride the wave. Yeah, yeah. So, there there is no coffee break. Definitely not. <laughs> without a cup of coffee. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. For sure. And and so I met you at at Cafe Real, right? Yeah, Eduardo's yeah. place. And um, were you always going there, or was that something? So, that... so again, and we'll touch base on this like a, a lot through this. Is that my life consists of a one main thing throughout my whole life it's skateboarding so started skateboarding when i was six how i ended up at eduardo's place is that one of the dudes that skates for me his name is jj um skates for my cbd cream company who used to skate for my sh my skate shop back in the day which we'll get to that he was like i met him at the skate shop one day in bristol i'm at, at the skate park in bristol and he was like yo you gotta go down to this coffee shop. And I was like, bro, I don't drink coffee, man. Like, right. why would I go there? And he's like, no, no, you gotta, you gotta go. So he's like, Sarah likes coffee, my wife. So I was like, yeah, I guess. He was like, no, 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 you gotta go down there. So we ended up going down there. And that's like when coffee, I never tasted coffee that tasted good to my palate. Mm. And it was because I was never drinking quality coffee. Right. You know, people would be like, yo, have a I'd be like, this is garbage, man. Like, why would I, yeah, why would I ever want to drink something that tastes like this? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I tasted that and I was like, wait a minute. Like, okay, I see where we're going with coffee. Yeah. And then I started frequenting oh. Cafe Real. But yeah. it wasn't until, it was probably, man, it's probably eight months ago. Oh, really? That <laughs> early? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I didn't even know it existed. Yeah. And, and the other thing too is that because of where me and my wife live, my my parents obviously live in Bristol mm -hmm. and that's where I grew up. So I didn't really get downtown where the cafe is unless I was going to the skate shop, but I never really, gotcha. you know, it, it wasn't until it was, there was a catalyst basically to be like, yo, you should go. And yeah. then when I went, and I kicked it with, with Eduardo, and I was like, yo, yeah. it, it, this is chill. Yeah. And then obviously our paths crossed. Yeah, no, this like coffee has been like, that's why I tell Eduardo all the time too. It's like, it's been, uh, um, I, I exaggerate sometimes because it's just, just me, whatever. That's the type of person I am. But the, the coffee has actually opened up many opportunities for me to like meet really cool people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the reason why I, I reached out to you too was not only because we met at the shop, but just the, the, the chemistry that, that we had when I met your wife there too, and yeah, I wanted yeah. you to meet my wife too, and I'm glad that she was able to meet her as well. Yeah, yeah. But um, it was just so dope just hearing a little bit of your story that kind of like sparked. I was like, oh man, I wish 
we can hear a little bit more about yeah, this, yeah, yeah. you know? And that's what I'm doing with this new season of Coffee Break, oh, about cool. just celebrating people, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 you were saying. Um, yeah. Letting everyone know, you know, that there's people out there doing some cool things and have been doing cool things, but they're not getting recognized like they mm. should, right? Um, so when I met you and you just, we started talking about sneakers and that was a whole nother level because yeah, yeah, I love yeah, sneakers yeah. myself. Yeah. So we got some sneakers right here. If yeah. you guys could see, this is just like, these are gold right here. You, nobody else has these, yeah, yeah. but- um, um, Yeah, I mean, you can't judge a book by its cover either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think a lot of people just look at people and they're like, you know, like me, like I got long hair, I got tattoos, like I don't right. look like somebody that would necessarily be like a sneakerhead, but right. like my past sneakers have been like a strong vibe through like my whole life, you know, starting out when I was young and then just progressively, you know, being like into creative stuff and then like expression, you know, so I think like, uh, you know, it's a self kind of self-expression type thing. For me, it's always been like that, where it's like to be rocking something that nobody else is rocking or or into something that nobody else is necessarily in, but you can't look at somebody, yeah. you know, you can't look at somebody with a suit on and be like, you know, that dude probably doesn't listen to hip hop. Right, yeah. You know, and, and I think like, if people don't reach out to other people as well and kind of break through that, that, that barrier, that, that barrier, that like, shell of what they are yeah. then they never will but coffee is a perfect catalyst i think yep. for that where people can be like oh well I, we both drink coffee yeah. we're both in the same place right uh, you know i think and it opens up a doors you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. To, to just all, all types of stuff that's what i'm saying like when we were talking there and then you said eduardo was that brought it up right he was like oh hey listen he's you got to let him know about the sneakers and then yeah. i was like that was like a a story to just keep going You're there like sneakers but i was like wait a second he likes coffee okay that's cool <laughs> sneakers now now yeah, that's yeah, a whole yeah. different thing so how how was it then like um before we get into the, the the main piece of this thing um but like were you always like you would think like oh my parents you know what i mean were, were collectors of sneakers or shoes or whatever so how did you get involved with, with sneakers or building up that kind of like desire for them? So, so growing up, I grew up like, like, I guess like middle class, like lower middle class. We grew up, you know, I didn't, I wasn't super rich. I didn't have like a lot of, you know, I didn't have a lot of stuff. My parents didn't have a lot of money. My dad worked two jobs. Um, so, but my mom was into, antiques and collecting antiques mm. so i wasn't really necessarily into it but what it did was planted that seed where it was like stuff has meaning and stuff also has a story mm -hmm. and is collectible so that was like kind of like the seed was planted where it was like this is you can collect things right you know, so early on, like, because of, I was heavily involved with skateboarding and skateboarding culture is really creative and self-expression. Mm. Um, and that's what it's founded on. Whereas like, you know, like, like sports, all sports are great, but certain, you know, like it's individual. You know what I'm saying? You join a team, it's like everybody wears the same thing, except maybe like basketball where you can rock like some sneakers that nobody else is rocking, oh, okay, you know, gotcha. or whatever. Yeah. But there's like a uniform so with skateboarding there was no uniform so you know early on it was like the only two real skate sneakers were like chuck taylor's you would wear or you would wear vans mm. you know so i always was like into vans because it was like they had checkers or they had like flower patterns or like yeah. crazy stuff so that was kind of like the first you know that in like break dancing were my first like introduction to sneakers i would say probably around the same time probably like 1984 maybe mm. like 84 85 so it was so pretty much it was your love for skating that end up like kind of like st uh, like it's your love for skating and then it like the sneaker stuff stemmed from from there because you needed some you were always like grinding obviously yeah, yeah, on, yeah. Your, on your yeah, feet yeah, or whatever so yeah. i'm pretty sure you wanted a good pair that and then 
I got involved because my parents were really into uh, music um, when I was young. So I got, I was always trying to seek out different music. And like when hip hop started, like, like when I was a kid, like you couldn't really go into like a record store and buy like hip hop. Mm. So we had to like, like tape it. So there were certain college stations or like maybe if you were like at the top of the hill and like Woolkit or Waterbury, you could get like some of the New York stations. Oh. And late at night they would play hip hop. And so from that, I got really involved in like break dancing and break dancing's all about style. Yeah. You know, it sounds crazy, but yeah. like, so those two things where it was like, I was watching these dudes that were wearing like stripe, pinstripe Lee jeans with like, like Puma Clydes or like shell toe Adidas that were like wearing like, you know, two different sneakers, you know, or crazy yeah. stuff like that. So that was like, those two things were kind of like the, I guess the crossroads for me where it was like skateboarding met s style and some and i and i started skating when i was six so it was really like oh wow through which was like a long time ago yeah. i'm way older than <laughs> people think i am so um so that so it was it was those two it was definitely like hip-hop and break dancing and then you know the skateboard aspect of oh. it skateboard and bmx nice so and then you started doing all that all those like creative stuff. It looks like you just stemmed out of a lot of this. So you got music, you got skateboarding, you got antiques, which would be under the collectibles type yeah, of thing. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I didn't, I, myself, I didn't really mess at, with, at with that. that. Point, but right. the seed was, you know, I think like a lot of people like stuff is disposable to people. So if you don't like learn at a young age of like, not that you have to learn at a young age, but you can learn at a young age to collect things. Right. Whether it's like, skateboards or whether you know whatever you're into whether it's like action figures or you know right. i mean nowadays the collectible thing is like yeah. insane where it's yeah. like everything's limited edition and everything's collectible yeah um but i think that for me was like the seed that really was like planted to be like nice. have respect for something that you that you're into yeah. you know put it on you yeah put it at put it on a pedestal like right. you know if you consider it that near and dear to you yeah then it should be put on a pedestal oh nice you know what i'm saying yeah, like exactly so then now years pass by you know what i'm saying you're building on this craft i'm pretty sure you're you're skateboarding you're yeah i mean i did i was a graffiti of, artist for a long time i was like I, I mean doing all types of cool things right like anything that was like underground like i urban, was like, like i was like stuff. yo I'm, in, I'm into that you know yeah. so like obviously one kind of like overlapped into the other hip hop and graffiti and all that stuff. So okay. that was, you know. And then now we go in and then years later, you have this collection of, of sneaker that's that's massive, right? It's like when we spoke and you were like, dude, like I literally have like almost a warehouse full of sneakers. I was like, what the SB Dunks and old school SBs, you know what I'm saying? We got some right here. Yeah, like, yeah. What, so like just these two right here, they, they, these are the, um, um, this is the, the Tiffany's, Tiffany's, right? Yeah, yeah. So like what, those right there, what like, um, um, what are these about? Like when you got them? So for, for me, um, the Tiffany was kind of like a, like I'll move this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the Tiffany was kind of like, like almost like a play on luxury. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was like, again, going back to the whole hip hop thing, like when I, when we were young and, and, you know, it was like, you would see these dudes wearing like big gold chains and, and rocking like Louis Vuitton and Gucci and all this other stuff. Um, so this was kind of like the, the cross between two worlds, if you will, where it was like luxury, but almost like ma not making fun of it, but just taking something that was this iconic luxury, mm -hmm. you know, like Tiffany. Right. Like, cause nobody in skateboarding would ever have anything to do with Tiffany right, 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 or right. diamonds really. Yeah. And making like the, you know, and, and then designing this, it kind of was like, like the next level of being like, oh yeah, like, yeah, we like sneakers. Cool. Like we're going to make this like, a luxury right and that's kind of what the to me that's kind of what the tiffany dunk kind of stood uh -huh. for you know yeah. i mean of course iconic like you know breakfast at tiffany's and like mm -hmm. you know like it's an iconic 
you know, Manhattan thing. Yeah. You know, very high end. But at the same Premium time, luxury. yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it was kind of like, you know, like you, you can have your own piece of like Tiffany. Yeah. You know, in a way, yep. and it kind of brought it like into a different spectrum, I think. And or, and it's funny that it's they did it in the form of like, like a a, a skateboard sneaker. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Say, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. When skateboards are meant to be like used and abused. Right. Exactly. So and then you got the used and abused part of it, but and then you got the the Tiffany representation of it as it being like premium luxury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you want to be careful. So I, I thought it was pretty cool too that yeah. to, for I, them to do something. I mean, I think like, I think that was the whole on a whole like with SB. Yeah. Like like on a whole some of the design was done knowing that sneakers would be destroyed yeah you know because like your craft is destroying uh, skateboard like mm. everything that is about skateboarding you're destroying really yeah, yeah. like the your board, sneakers your board wheels. people's property yeah you know what i mean like oh, you're grinding ledges <laughs> like you're destroying property i yeah. mean you know so it's like unless you're of course in a yeah. skate park but you're still destroying like the skate park in order for your craft to be so i think part of it you know because nike did do a few sneakers where um like some of them like one they did where the denim like ripped off and underneath it was like a different pattern underneath mm. or the cutaways where you could cut them off yeah but i think intent like their intent was to skate them and then as you skate them they become like a different sneaker as it, you know as you're wearing kind of wearing through like the material um, it's almost like the leather you know what i mean yeah, they yeah. say you know the, the the more you use it the, the better, better looking it, it becomes i don't stuff know like about that. i don't yeah, know if that's it's what like I, gets darker with, with you know, skateboarding yeah. you know but, but, a little bit different. but yeah so you all you you know i think the other thing with with collecting like a, a skate sneaker for example is the whole purpose of it is to be destroyed so collecting it is like preserving you know kind of what it what it is because right. the opposite of it is to be destroyed you know mm -hmm. i mean from from me and i have destroyed a lot of no, yeah, nike man. sbs in Makes my sense. in in you know the history of me having nike sbs <laughs> i i look sure. back and i go oh dude i don't know why i ever skated those sneakers like yeah. you know like the uh the ice cr or the sea crystals somebody call some people call them sea crystal ice crystals they were one of the first and they're like a they're like kind of like a tiffany color and they're suede pigskin highs and they're like one of my favorite sneakers and i skated them i still have them they have holes all in them but i was like yo why did you ever like out of all and, and suede pigskin does not last uh. so it's like it's super thin so it doesn't last so like so th those probably like it probably i would say probably in like three weeks those com got completely wrecked no. with holes in them so wow so you got so you go on you 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 have this 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 interesting you know childhood with like many dynamics to it you know what yeah. i'm saying in different in different areas and then all of a sudden you get this you know huge collection of sneakers specifically dunks because they you know it correlates with your love for skateboarding right yeah and then you end up opening up a skate shop right so how, so how it went was i had worked at another shop uh skate shop called cutting edge which is like a like uh, in berlin connecticut and, and craig who owns it's one of my oldest friends um he gave me a job there he's older than me but he gave me a job there um and i started uh i started working there and and managing it and whatnot at that time this is the early 90s and um and after a couple of years of being there i was like yo i'm gonna do my own thing mm. so i broke off mind you nike in the it might have been the late 80s or no i think it was the early 90s it was around like when x games got really big okay so i'm i'm, I'm gonna say it was probably like 90 six ninety seven somewhere around there uh maybe even a little bit earlier nike tried to break into the skateboard scene and kind of did it like not in a fashion you know like i was i was telling you earlier we were talking about culture mm -hmm. and skateboarding culture is it's a lifestyle so it's hard to like 
you can't break into it, especially if you're Nike. You can't be like, yeah, we're gonna make skate sneakers. Everybody's gonna buy them. Yeah. Cause like we're not drinking the Kool-Aid that everybody else is drinking gotcha. per se. Yeah. Um, and it failed. So then I think they really wanted to do it and then realized that they had to get like in at a lower like street level to get street cred. So I had opened my shop and I was open for, man, I was open for like a good amount of years. And then um, one of my friends contacted me who had just got the account and said, oh, they wanna open up another Nike SB account with like a real deal shop, you know, skate shop. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I was kind of skeptical about it. I was like, ah, and he was like, yo, trust me, man. Like they're doing limited edition sneakers that are only gonna do so many pairs that are coming to only the core skate shops are gonna get them. Um, so then I agreed to it and then kind of like, that's where like the of love of s sneakers yeah. and all that. So it was just building up from there. Yeah. 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 I had already loved yeah. the sneaker culture yeah. and was collecting sneakers. Yep. Um, but then it, then it like really exploded, you know, like it, it was like pretty crazy. Yeah. So I was lucky to be at the place where I was at the right time. Right, right, right. Cause then it gave you that more and more opportunity. Like if anything, you were like one of like the first to actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, engage with this world like that, right? Yeah, yeah, because like I had kind of seen who, what we were doing and, or what they were doing and kind of where they were going with it. Mm. And the people that they had on board um, were like legit skateboard people okay you know gotcha. what i mean yeah. like from the culture like yeah. from other aspects of skateboarding so they were looking out for like the little guy right you know where most of the time we weren't getting looked out for yeah and that's kind of like so that was really where again skateboarding kind of came into being like you know like a a large portion of like my life yeah you know just kind of went back to that old no thing, yeah so. that, that's cool and then now it's like you know you you get this huge collection you're doing a lot of cool things right you got a skate shop that 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 it's like kind of like one of the first to actually do probably what you were doing and stuff yeah right? yeah 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 and then then we get into a big moment of your life right where it's like you have this huge collection now when when did you realize like you had a massive collection because you know sometimes you get sneakers but then you're like wait a second i have 500 sneakers really like, well i just I, well i just went through that when i was going through the, this oh, stuff okay. to look at it but no I, I like i think i really um when i when it was all in a storage unit okay. so like if you you know like fast forward um you know i think it was I want to say it was like 2010, maybe. I don't remember. Like, I'm not good with like mm. dates, but I think around 2010 is kind of when um, the whole Nike thing, like, kind of, uh, they decided to go into like in a different direction yeah. than what we were intending them to do. Yeah. Um, which I spoke with you earlier. Yeah. We, yeah. I mean, we don't have yeah. to go into. We can if yeah. we want to. Um, and but you got to remember like at that time like i was supplying stores in the city yep with sneakers with and sneakers what? yep so like i was like you know i told you i was like it was like i was like a drug dealer right, for right. sneakers. i know when you said that that was so funny because that, that's like the best way to actually explain it like there, there's no other way because there there it, there really was yeah. no other i mean you can ask my wife she'll be like yo like we would get in the you know, she, she's gone on runs with me where the van is full of sneakers and I like would just pull up in front of like a, the spot in the yeah. city and like be like, yo, unload. and just unload it and get in the truck or the van and just head back to Connecticut and <laughs> then just get these checks in the mail where I was like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I hustled, yeah. you know, and, and a big portion of my life and what skateboarding has taught me and, and like underground music and stuff is like is that you if you want something you have to do it yourself mm. it's always been that diy mentality yeah. you know like yeah. throughout and, and 
and skateboarding is one of those things where it's like you don't have a team you don't have a team to carry you right you know what i'm saying you want to learn a trick you have to go out there and bust your ass yeah. and fall down and get hurt and then you know yeah. in order to learn it so hustling's always been like in my nature yeah not not illegal hustling right right yeah but just hustling yeah just just work you know working grinding and and like you know getting your um um when you want something that that's what you do right you, you go after it and you try different ways of like you know getting it done yeah or you see an opportunity and you're right. like yo and you take it you yeah. know because like when i first went down to the city and was dealing with these with these stores right. they were like yo you can get us sps i was like yeah man like i got an account i can order whatever you want mm -hmm. so then they were placing orders with me right as to what they needed and like i told you before like with 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 the with the sb account the more ordering you did the more they deliver the more them. limited stuff you would get oh gotcha so like some of the smaller shops you know yeah. like 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 perfect example um like the tiffany dunks yeah. like when i got the tiffany's man i got like 30 pairs of tiffany dunks like but other shops might have got five pairs but it was because i was doing sixty thousand dollars worth of nike stuff every month i yeah. was buying yeah. so in turn it was like you get more if you buy more right so the incent that was the incentive wow you know so i just saw opportunity and i just went for it yeah um wow and, that, that's that's cool man and i rode that way for as long as i possibly yeah, could no, you know? i know and and mm. it, you you could see you know what i mean because then now you got this massive co massive collection and then you what really like blew my mind away literally when we had our first discussion in, in cafe had when you was like yeah like the house that i live in right now <laughs> like oh, like maybe like two or three percent of my collection was used to buy my house and yeah, i was yeah. like what you know like not that i was that i didn't believe it but it was just like wow that's that's wild you know what i mean so how did that come about so so it it so we'll fa like you know throughout the sneaker thing if we fast forward i ended up closing my shop in in 2010. um nike nike again wanted to go in a different direction i won't you know i won't slander them yeah. um the way they did it they didn't necessarily have to do it in that way and they didn't do it just to me they did it to a bunch of accounts because i spoke with many accounts okay, that gotcha. happened to the same the same way that they were doing it um and it was just kind of a cutthroat thing you know yeah. and they're a corporation so it's understandable but it wasn't really kind of left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths but at that time just everything was really going to online kids really didn't want to go in brick and mortar stores they were ordering online so you know so i decided i was like you know what my heart wasn't in it really anymore and i promised myself when i started my business mm. when my heart wasn't in it then i would get out whether i was making money or not mm. like i was like yo if, if i'm not feeling it then i'm not doing it mm. um so i closed the store um and then um my myself my my wife sarah we've known each other for a long time um before we got married and and she was living in the city like she told you uh, she was living in the city and then unfortunately her mom passed away mm. unexpectedly she had to come back to connecticut i was in like a bad situation i had moved out of my apartment and um and then we kind of got together and uh, uh, we were like we knew that we were meant to be together mm. at that point so we decided hey you know we're gonna buy a house so at that time really um my one big chunk of money was sneakers because mm. i had this collection and i was just like yo I, like there's no way when i was collecting stuff i was not only collecting stuff for me but i was smart enough to put like full size runs aside of really limited stuff oh. so it was like you know like i would keep two pairs for me and then i would keep a size run of you know like tiffany's right because like i was making enough money where even if i was bringing stuff to the city like i still had enough to be like yo i'm gonna store these, these 10 pairs i'm just gonna store them aside okay 
not necessarily with the intention that they would be necessarily worth money right. but i was just like yo i like i didn't know at the time you know i had my shop and it was always like oh well if somebody comes in and it was like hey i know it's like three months later but you got any of those you know any of the you know whatever sneaker it was yeah. if i liked you enough then i would be like yeah i got some that i on ice like you want a pair like yeah and you know so a lot of it was that a lot of it was more or less not thinking like i'm making money it was like i'll put these aside somebody might come in and want a pair locally okay um and then it just got out of control like out of out of control so at that point I, you know, I told my wife, I was like, hey, it's more important that we get a house than to have sneakers. So I took a bunch and we brought them to one of the resellers, uh, Flight Club in New yep. York City, which I knew really well and worked with before. Um, it's different owners now, but I yep. knew the, the original owners and all the guys that worked there. Um, and, uh, and they sold them and then we found a house and that was that was that so that that's so dope man you that, literally can't buy a house with sneakers yeah you can mm -hmm. and and that's why like you know with these interviews right you start seeing so many different ways that that you can go about different like things right yeah yeah even yeah. to buying a house like, yeah yeah you literally bought a house with pairs of sneakers that that you had right yeah. obviously there was a grind to it in the background oh, it's not course. that you were just buying whatever but um it, it just goes to show that that whatever you put your mind into whatever it is yeah. especially like the younger generation now that sometimes you say hey listen you're going to school to study for this whatever and they're like you know like there's so many other opportunities now to make money in collections of sneakers and you know building your craft yeah so f like for me it's uh, like i was creative i think like a lot of creative people are are business minded per se but not not business minded like college business course minded right, right, right. so like for me just quickly like just to touch base on like like i was always about hustling so it was like when i was in high school like i would i was in screen printing class so i would screen print bootleg hip-hop shirts because we couldn't get hip-hop shirts like tribe called quest or like oh, yeah. whatever it was or you know run dmc and i would sell them at school or like i would paint people's jackets for money or at like tang like you know. i remember a perfect example is like like africa be like when the africa beads were like big like in the city you could get them yep. so you would have to either go to the city but like me and one of my really close friends damien like we started a business making beads to sell to people because they were like yo i want to like africa beads like big beads like this is like 1989 bro so so like for me it was always like teachers would be like yo he's 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 really smart but he doesn't apply himself. That was always, I would always hear, my parents would be like, the teacher said you're not applying yourself because I was the kid that was looking out the window thinking in my head like, man, I wish I was outside skating the, that curb yeah. <laughs> as opposed to listening to some garbage that I'll never use in my entire life like algebra. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, not that it's garbage, yeah, but I was yeah, just yeah. using it. Like right. I was like, uh, you know, like, so I think early on, you have to kind of realize what path you're going to go down. If you're creative, yep. like it's not necessarily like utilize that in a different way. Utilize it in something that's creative. You know, if you're like a, a musician, like, like study the art, study playing guitar, study making beats or whatever the case may be and just yeah. do it and do it and do it and find like an outlet where you can, or like a group of people that are in the same vein of what you're doing and then kind of like network from there. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's hard to make money being creative. Yeah. I won't lie to you. Yeah. Like my whole life has been that. It has always been creative. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Right. Because I am always the cat that's like, yo, I'm going to start this. And like, like I started a golf clothing company. I got really into golf, right? Started a golf clothing company because I hated golf clothes because they were whack. So I started designing golf clothes and it was so ahead of the curve that 
I couldn't even produce it because nobody would buy it because nobody was on that level. Now there's all these companies that just came out over the past four or five years yeah. that are making like golf gear that you could wear. Like so that's fashion like yeah, yeah. fashionable golf gear. Yeah, yeah, like stuff that I would like go yeah. on, you know, or like sh sh golf shoes that look like skate sneakers or, right. you know, stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, it, it is a, it is a grind. Like it is going to be way harder than going and getting a degree and somebody giving you a piece of paper that says, Hey, you could do this. Right. Like being creative is tough. Yeah. If you notice like creative people, there's not a lot of success as successful people, you know, if, if, if that was a thing, then the dude that works at the gas station down the street would be like making beats. Right. But that's not like the case or somebody that worked at a insurance company would be like, like a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. So it is a lot harder to be creative and make money doing it. But I think in this day and age, it's a lot easier than when I was young to do it. Right. Whereas like, you don't really have to like be out there and you know going just touching base about like with my motorcycle brand and right. that company yeah we want to touch on that you know that that without the internet and without that it wouldn't have you know that wouldn't have come to fruition as it did so i think nowadays there's a lot of there's there's a lot of outlets or there's a lot of uh of things that kids can utilize to to make money and be and be successful where i didn't have the opportunity when i was young to do it okay. but i think you know going back to the whole school thing it's like it if school's not for you man like then it's just it, it's not it's not for you like do what you have to do yeah. i'm not saying to drop out of school yeah 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 do your school i mean i i, I finished high school yeah but then you know like hit the ground running figure out like what you want to do what you like to do yeah, yeah because right when you like something you end up putting 100 percent into it because it's like it, it won't, it doesn't feel like a job. Right, 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 right. It's like when we're doing these types of things, like I'm doing it, yeah, it's a grind. Yeah, it, it takes a while to get where you want to get to, but at least you like what you're doing. Right. So you're not really thinking about it like, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God, hey, I can't wait to clock out or whatever. Right, right. It's just like, oh no, you know, like, and and if you lose, it's because it was you, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because you have you have full control over, right. over that at that moment, how, how much you want to grind and push through with it. So like, you know, and it, you can tell, like, and, and that's what I like when I, you know, just started talking to you and just building, you know, breaking bread with you um, and just seeing, like, so many different outlets. And usually every creative person that I speak to, because sometimes I thought I was the only one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That when I speak to them, they're like, oh, yeah, like, I was doing this and I'm still doing it. But then, like, I got this, too. You right. know what I mean? I'm, I, I, th that's brewing. And then actually, yeah, like for a couple of months, I just been actually dabbing into this yeah, yeah. and creating. So it's almost like these different pieces that creatives, I think, you know, build for themselves because they're creative. Yeah, yeah. So when you're creative, you can develop different outlets for yourself. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? In different ways. Yeah, right? for And sure. then you just figure out how you can either combine them, you know, like your love for sneakers, skateboarding, all this stuff, right? then you end up creating you know a skate shop from the skate shop you close it down but and then you're like oh wait a second i can open up a, a my own brand you know and you do it through the motorcycle yeah, right yeah, and yeah. it's tradition is what tradition you what cycles. you end up tradition, tra tra tradition, tradition cycles. cycles yeah so then you go into that route and it's like what well, so it's, it's like well you know i i, I uh, being in you have to always be in motion mm. you know like when you stop you know, it granted, like there has been a lot of tough times in my life and mm. I've made my, I've made it myself, mm. like being tough mm. on myself. And also like by doing that, by being like, no, I'm not going to like get a paycheck. I'm not going to go work for, you know, like my skate shop was a perfect example. I worked for another person at a skate shop and I made that shop what it was. And then in my brain, could I have worked there the rest of my life? Of course I could. But in my brain, I was like, yo, I'm making this dude way more money than I'm making an hour. Mm -hmm. If I could do this, I could open my own shop. So, you know, so in turn, it was one of those things where 
I learned from somebody else's mistakes per right. se, yep. from his mistakes, what he did wrong. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, and I brought that into my own, mm. but it, but you know, it's difficult, but again, as long as you have motion, when, you know, when, when a boat sits in the, the middle of an ocean or it, you know, it, it, it's, it's anchored, where's it going? Mm. Nowhere. So regardless of, of, the motion you're always in motion you know and, and being brought up the way i was brought up by my parents to be like don't judge a book by its cover and never you know like different religions all this stuff people are people i have a lot of really great people in my life because i've been in motion mm. and been active and and when you're creative and you put that out there like what you put out you get in return you know, and there's been times where it's been depressing. You know, I've had injuries, like I told you, with my shoulder and stuff yeah. like that. And when I really like kind of drawn myself back and you notice like nothing's happening. So I think with, with, with the young generation is, is you have to take your, you know, you got to take your ass whooping. Mm. Like there's going to be times where it's going to suck. Yeah. But if you're willing to put the time in, eventually it will be prosperous and come to fruition you 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 can't expect something to happen overnight mm. and you always have to be like you always have to everything has to be a stepping stone especially when you're creative and like you were saying it's like yeah like like there might be a theme through your life per se like music mm. like a huge theme of music through your life but you might touch on all these different stepping stones along the way that finally you're in a position where you're like yo i hooked up with this dude he's got a studio i'm gonna be a studio drummer mm. you know and doing something that i want to do yeah. because the chances of like of stardom or the chances of being like a professional football player or basketball player are very slim so you can't you can't like you can't let something like that crush you if it doesn't happen you just have to find a different you know it's like it would be like going down a river and then all of a sudden you get to a dam but you see a stream yeah. so you're like yo i better go down that stream to get around the dam yeah. so there's always like a stepping stone to being like you know i think the younger generation wants like instant gratification because they're so used to being on a phone yeah. and seeing all this stuff happening and 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 you know like which is cool because it's made it personal where you know like rappers or musicians or artists don't seem that far away from you mm. you know you see them in like your house you know doing like podcasts they're in their house and you're in your house you're like oh that dude's not that much different than me yeah yeah but i think sometimes like you you can't let things destroy you mm. you have to just take it in in you know so i think in turn you know a, a lot of times kids get distraught over not being good at math or not being good in school and it's like maybe you're not good in school but maybe you're not meant to be good in school mm. so you you take what you can from school and then you you bring that to you know you utilize that in a different fashion mm. whether it be you know like biz, like using it for business yeah. or using it for whatever you, you know whatever maybe taking a communications class or something like that or, mm -hmm. or you know graphic design or something like that and then kind of bringing it into the the next level wow that's so good yeah, that's like a little, um, um, that, that's a message for you all out there that's that's watching this because I, I like that whole concept, you know, of just stay in motion and it's so true because when I, I find myself sometimes like when I'm not in that motion is when you start like, obviously you slow down, right? If something's not moving, it's going to slow down and it's going to slow down in, 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 in so many different ways. And that's why, like, even my wife sometimes has to remind me with certain things. Oh, remember, you're still, yeah, still yeah. going to do that, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, you, oh yeah, you, yeah, 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 I got to do that. Um, so it's it's good um, that you mention it because it's it's something that that we gotta um, just do, especially for all the creatives that are watching this now, uh, sneaker lovers, people who are entrepreneurs and stuff. Because th that's what ends up happening. You end up becoming like an entrepreneur. Yeah. You start creating all these different things, but um, most I mean mostly everything starts from something small. You always have to prosper. Yeah. You can't let something defeat you once you're defeated then you're you're done you know but it takes time right right like you know it's like stuff that happen overnight like whether it's collecting sneakers whether it's you know playing music whether it's design or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. like 
you know, throughout life, you're like certain stuff sticks with you. Other stuff, you're like, oh, I had a great idea. My golf line of clothing, great idea. Yeah. Mm. It just, I knew at some point I was like, it's not going to work because it's kind of ahead of the curve, right? you know, or, or whatever the case may be. But if I would have let that destroy me, then I wouldn't have been on to, you know, so I took designing clothes and whatnot. And then in the future, you know, fast forward to my, to my line of, you know, motorcycle stuff, which mm -hmm. is like worldwide now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I saw that, man. And I was like, the magazines, you know, you're on, you know, like Vogue, it's like, it's like Vogue magazine. Vogue of motorcycles. Vogue of motorcycles. But, you know, but, but then I took that, my love of clothes and design and brought it into, and, and yeah, reincorporate it into, into the motorcycle thing. So I think that's really important. Like it, not only um, that, but just kind of like always, even if it's an old idea, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, like revisit, revisiting, revisiting it. Yeah, it's you know? true because sometimes it, it that, that's so true actually, because then that means you, just because you got an amazing idea, it probably might not be for that time. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a firm, myself, I'm a firm believer of like, the universe will give you, mm. you know, I mean, I mean, some people it's, it's religious, right. you know, whether it's, it's, you know, whatever religion you are, if it, you know, God will provide you with what you, you know, mm -hmm. what at that time you need, right. You know, and, 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 or the universe or whatever it is like, like has this like kind of way of providing mm -hmm. you know it's like you cross paths with people that you need to cross paths with at the time that you need to cross it but if you're at your if if if, if you're debilitated and you're in your house yeah. you might not cross paths with that person mm -hmm. not necessarily meaning that you that opportunity won't come to fruition in the future but for me it's always been like you know like i've had people friends of mine tell me like yo harley's like the center of this weird universe that like he links people with other people because i have so many eclectic people that i've met where i'm like yo oh you're into this oh my boy is into that so i'm gonna link you guys up and then they you know become friends and might do a venture doing something like that so i think it's really important to kind of just like be, be, right? Like be, like yeah. be where you're at. Do the things that you do, and you cross paths with the with the right people at the time when you need it most. Yeah, that that that's good. It's like when you know how we and and I always thank God first of all for just meeting the people that I meet. Right, because right. Because I know that they're like meant to meet them. When I met Eduardo, when I met you, when I met Duncan, my, my yeah, Duncan yeah. and all like, the, and they've all stemmed, I'm telling you, from coffee yeah, shops. Yeah, which is weird. You know, and, and it's like, it's like, wow, this is so amazing. And it's like people that are, are like around my path of stuff that I like to do, stuff that I'm doing. And it's just, they're, they're like little pieces there that just give insight in so many yeah, different yeah, yeah. ways. That's why like, you know, again, going back to this and just like, just giving a shout out to you too, you know what I mean? Like to celebrate you and be like, yo bro, thanks for the work that oh, you're doing, you. you know what I mean? As an entrepreneur, as a creative, because creatives need to hear creatives yeah, speak, yeah, yeah, for you know? Sure. And just so many different things that, that I wanna be able to bring to light of just people that are doing some cool things. Again, this is Harley, um, like Harley Davidson, literally. Yeah. And um, he's he's involved in a whole bunch of cool things. We got sneakers, so make sure to like, share, subscribe. Again, I'm repeating myself <laughs> because I need for you to stay tuned at these next episodes that we're gonna be dropping. Uh, thanks again, bro, for well, um, for, for joining me thanks here. Thanks for having me. It was um, been, it's been a pleasure. Yes, yeah, coffee delicious. Good, right? Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Um, and, and and you know the company's been great, so I love doing stuff like this too. Yeah, so, I, I love it, bro. You know, this is so good, man. But it's been it's been good for me too. So you, it, it, just the going back and forth, and you know, like some, some inspiration as well for me too. Not only you know oh, for no, you, I but it's been that. a lot of inspiration for me. So thank, thanks for having me. I, I'm honored. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. And so like every episode. Never settle with being good when you have been meant to be great. See you later, guys.